Okay, so in this second video, I'm going to talk about an alternative to outlining that is sometimes called mind mapping. Um, but we can also just think about um, as a process of visualizing your essay in a kind of three-dimensional way um, that, you know, outlines can be very, very linear. Sometimes that's helpful, sometimes it's not. But um, if you find that you have difficulty organizing all of your thoughts into an outline, then um, this might be a method for you. It's, it's a way of kind of starting from the bottom up, you know, whereas outlines are a little bit more top down, where you're sort of imposing structure on something that doesn't, on a paper that doesn't exist yet. Um, this helps you kind of build your paper up from its foundation, which is your research. Um, and then you can sort of create structure as you add material, okay? So I'm going to demonstrate this using a presentation platform called Prezi. Prezi was really kind of popular, maybe seven or eight years ago. Um, it's not as common right now, I think partly because it's built on Flash and Flash sort of had its moment and is now not as common anymore. You can't share it on social media easily, et cetera. So um, it's not as popular. Um, they now have a video version called Prezi Next. I haven't played around with um, as much, but um, I actually like it as a way of organizing and visualizing information for myself, even if it's not something that I'm going to share with other people. Um, so I'm starting here with kind of a, a, a new account. Um, this is what it would look like if you're just getting started with it. By the way, it's free, and so you can just go and create an account and start playing around with it. Um, and if you open, create a new presentation, this is what it looks like when um, when you get started with a new presentation. This is with no template loaded, nothing. This is just the blank slate, okay? And so what Prezi Lite allows you to do is use all of these different shapes um, and then manipulate them around, put them inside of one another so that you can zoom in and zoom out on different things, um, and then manipulate and rearrange them in all kinds of different ways. And you can create presentations by setting the order in which your shapes appear um, or you can just kind of use this as an overall, you know, kind of visual mapping space. Like you don't, you don't have to create a presentation out of it. You can just use it as something that you explore on your own. So I said that this is a kind of an effective way of building an outline or building a structure from the bottom up. And that's because what you can do is as you are doing your research, let's say you're gathering sources. Um, each time you find a new source, you know, you can go and make one of these circles and you can dedicate it to a source. And so you have maybe your citation here so that you remember what it is, um, you know, with all, all the info you need and then create, and to create new things like to add text and stuff, you just double click anywhere in the space um, and it'll create a new text box for you. And maybe you summarize it in a couple of sentences, maybe you cut and paste a research summary in here. Um, uh, whatever whatever it is is helpful for you, okay? So you have source one, and then maybe, you know, and I can just copy, paste, maybe you create another one of these for source two, okay? And then maybe another one for source three, okay? And, whoops. And then maybe another one for, so you can see I'm, I'm um, creating a whole bunch of little circles out here um, and I'm starting to kind of zoom out as I add more content to this field. And you know, okay, so I need a total of six sources. Keep doing that. So I've got my six sources here, okay? And notice that I haven't really attempted to impose any kind of structure here. I just have them kind of all arranged in any, in any particular order. And so, um, you know, again, you're, you're required to have six sources, but you don't just need six sources. You know, you could have nine if you need them, you can have 12, I, I don't care, um, as long as you have at least six. So you have six sources. Um, and you need then to kind of 
figure out how you're going to build a paper out of this. So like I said in the outlining video, um, it may be easiest to start with um, the literature review section, kind of to see what positions are available. And so, you know, as you are looking at these sources and you begin comparing them, maybe you start organizing them into groups. So maybe you notice that sources one and three are sort of arguing for the same position or from a similar perspective. And then you notice that, I need to zoom in a little bit more when you have hard time picking things up in here, it usually means you're too zoomed out. And these two sources are kind of similar to each other. And then maybe, okay, also source six is kind of like this. Maybe source four is off by itself. So maybe I need to go do some more research and I need to add a source seven. Okay, now I feel pretty good. You know, so this is something that you can kind of do as you're reading, as you're gathering information. Um, and so, you know, you have all of these things like this, okay? So then maybe you can create a shape to help block these off. So what you can do is like take this bracket shape here, this bracket frame, and you can place it around these two sources. And um, these will all sort of become now a unit. And maybe you go in here and you call this position one. Okay, and you could even say, you can add some other text here and say, kind of describe or um, add a description of what you think it is that these sources share, what they have in common. And then we have a position two over here. And you, a description. And the reason for adding this text is because it's potentially text that you can then just go import into um, your paper later on. So, you know, your description can be, you know, kind of a brief description of what the sources have in common, um, why they argue for what they, how they disagree with the other positions. So it's sort of your um, your take, your kind of analysis, not really analysis, but your explanation of why these sources are distinct, okay, from, from the other groups, why it's a distinct position. And then let's kind of give these a little bit more space. But maybe you then group these down into position three, okay? And so from there, you can do a number of different things. You know, you could start kind of drafting within these boxes. So you can start writing text that will eventually become the paragraphs of your essay. And then maybe once you have some text, you can start kind of, again, moving text around and, and organizing it. So you could actually like um, come over here and create a separate area, kind of a separate space here. And you could begin taking um, description that you've written. Um, maybe you also include in, in these source bubbles, you include some quotations and you could begin moving it over into a different part of this workspace. Um, and um, so I'm gonna copy and paste this over here and start kind of creating a drafting space or an essay space um, so that it begins to kind of come together in like actual, what would look like actual essay text, okay? And then maybe I take a quote from over here you know, et cetera, maybe, maybe I start adding this stuff and you can kind of start organizing the actual text into, um, in, into paragraphs, okay? So um, 
what is really great about this method is that unlike an outline, it's it's nonlinear. OK, so it's not just text stacked on top of itself. You can actually explore relationships here a little bit easier um, and you can manipulate things so that the relationships change. Um, and, you know, you can do things like you could add images if you want to. You could embed videos if some of your sources are videos. You can add links to all of this. There's all kinds of things you can do, um, do in this platform. You can also draw arrows. So maybe you decide, you know, actually, I want my essay to develop like this. You know, so even though I said this is position two and this is position three, actually, I want my paragraphs to proceed in this style. OK, like um, there's just all kinds of things you can do to kind of help visualize the information that you've collected um, and to begin organizing it into something that you can actually turn into an essay. So um, I'm, I'm a fan of this method, I have to say. I, um, I like what it can do, I think. And it also, you know, presents some pretty cool visuals that if you wanted to um, use it to help develop a presentation later on, you could certainly do that. Um, you will have to turn major essay three into a presentation. So that's just something to keep in mind. You know, it could it could actually also help you do that. Um, and also it's three dimensional. You know, it's not just about um, arranging things onto this um, 2D plane. You know, you can actually zoom in and out and um, should and explore relationships that way. Um, so anyway, um, this if if you don't like this, it might be because it feels kind of fussy. You know, it's a little bit too complicated. And you'd rather really just get started writing, and that's also absolutely fine. Um, we're actually going to explore that option um, in the next video.